Welcome. Welcome to the Health Equity in Action Summit, addressing systemic barriers in healthcare that lead to racial and ethnic health inequities. We have gathered a stellar group of thought leaders who will share their perspectives and expertise to stimulate your ideas and participation. We encourage you to share your thoughts, experiences, and recommendations for scalable solutions to these systemic barriers. My name is Melissa Bishop Murphy, and I am so pleased to be here today representing the Pfizer Multicultural Health Equity Collective, one of the co-conveners of today's summit. The collective is a cooperative of Pfizer colleagues and U.S.-based organizations focused on achieving health equity across ethnic groups and other underrepresented communities facing significant health disparities. In partnership with key groups across the U.S., including patient advocacy organizations, healthcare provider associations, community groups, and legislative caucuses, we address health disparities among underserved populations through unique community programming and outreach. Our work is guided by the Pfizer Multicultural Advisory Council, the PMAC. The PMAC is a dynamic group of leaders from organizations that help inform the work of the Multicultural Health Equity Collective and has enhanced Pfizer's level of cultural competency in reaching underrepresented communities. The PMAC engages with Pfizer on important health and policy issues and provides counsel on specific Pfizer initiatives. A number of our advisory council members are in, in attendance today, so thank you, council members. I'm also proud to introduce the other co-conveners of this summit. The co-conveners are the Morehouse School of Medicine, the National Association of County and City Health Officials, the National Minority Quality Forum, and the Century Foundation. Look, we all know Morehouse School of Medicine, located right here in Atlanta, Georgia, it was founded in 1975 as a medical education program at the Morehouse College. In 1981, the Morehouse School of Medicine became an independently chartered institution. Morehouse School of Medicine is among the nation's leading educators of primary care physicians and was recently recognized as the top institution among U.S. medical schools for their social mission. Morehouse's faculty and alumni are noted in their fields for excellence in teaching, research, and public policy. The National Association of County and City Health Officials. NACHO is the, is the United States' strongest advocate for local health departments, is proud to provide educational tools and resources to all its members with efforts including promoting national policy, developing resources and programs, seeking health equity, and supporting effective local public health practice and systems. The National Minority Quality Forum is a research and educational organization dedicated to ensuring that high-risk racial and ethnic populations and communities receive optimal health care. This nonprofit, nonpartisan organization integrates data and expertise in support of initiatives to eliminate health disparities. And finally, but certainly not last, the Century Foundation. It's a progressive independent think tank that conducts research, develops solutions, and drives policy change to make people's lives better. The Century Foundation pursues economic, racial, and gender equity in education, healthcare, and work, and promotes U.S. foreign policy that fosters international cooperation, peace, and security. Let's give all our co-conveners a hand. You will hear from leaders from each of these organizations throughout the summit. It is not by happenstance that we are meeting in Atlanta to talk about solutions to systemic barriers in healthcare. After all, Atlanta is known as the cradle of the civil rights movement. Atlanta was the epicenter in the fight for racial equity for voting rights, economic and education rights, and social justice rights. 
Atlanta was also the home of a number of prominent civil rights leaders like the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Reverend Joseph Lowry, Reverend Hosea Williams, Coretta Scott King, and my friend, the late Congressman John Lewis. So it's only fitting to host a discussion on health equity in Atlanta and at the Laudermilk Center, which has its own history rooted in equal access and equality. In addition, the Laudermilk Center is located in the heart of the Sweet Auburn District. For those of you who are not from Atlanta, the Sweet Auburn District is the birthplace of the American Civil Rights Movement. Atlanta's Sweet Auburn neighborhood serves as the economic and social center for the city's African-American community. This neighborhood that we're in today rose to prominence because of the city's segregation laws and served as the cradle for developing a community of individuals ready to challenge the entire Jim Crow system. Today's summit brings together experts and leaders from across the healthcare ecosystem to share insights and perspectives that we hope will help shape innovative solutions to address critical gaps in equitable access to care and improve population health. We recognize that we are not the first and certainly will not be the last cohort to address systemic barriers in healthcare. We know that justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion have not fully been achieved despite the best efforts of others. However, we hope and intend to move the ball forward in measurable ways with today's summit and your partnership. We at Pfizer are proud to be working with all the co-conveners co and others. We will continue to build upon learnings from today's summit and are committed to sustaining this initiative. I would like to thank each and every one of you for your attendance today, and I look forward to your active participation. We encourage you to follow along and join the conversation using the equity and action hashtag on social media. Now, I'm very happy to present to you a health equity champion who diligently fights the good fight to protect the health of our communities. She is none other than the legendary Congressman woman Robin L. Kelly from the state of Illinois. Congresswoman Kelly unfortunately could not be with us in person today, but she sends greetings via these recorded greetings. Good morning. I wish I could be with you in person today, but my boots are on the ground in Chicago where I am dutifully performing my responsibilities in advance of our upcoming elections. I want to congratulate the National Minority Quality Forum, National Association of County and City Health Officials, Morehouse School of Medicine, the Century Foundation, and Pfizer as the co-convening organizations of this Leadership Summit on Health Equity. And thank all of you for joining them in this innovative discussion on optimal interventions to systemic drivers of racial health inequities. This is an issue important to all of us we have allowed the conditions in our society that lead to health disparities, health inequities, and disparate health outcomes among our diverse population for far too long. We saw the impact of that on our economy during the COVID pandemic. COVID-19 disproportionately affected racial and ethnic minority groups with high rates of death in African-American, Native American, and Latinx communities. We still have a lot to learn about the causal factors, but data points to higher rates of chronic medical conditions among these groups, lower access to health care, and other societal determinants of health. Solving the issues that lead to racial health inequities is both a moral demand and economic imperative. I am proud to have introduced the Health Equity and Accountability Act in Congress earlier this year. This is legislation that directly addresses the intersection of health inequities with race and ethnicity, as well as immigration status, age, disability, sex, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity and expression, language and socioeconomic status. It's a piece of legislation that will go a long way to address many of the issues you will be discussing today. This legislation has been introduced by the Congressional Tri Caucus every year since 2003, and I say it's time to take action and finally get the bill passed. So in your discussions around policy solutions today, 
I hope you will consider how you can help us get this done. Legislation and grassroots efforts to solve these systemic issues must go hand in hand. And that is why I'm encouraged that you are all gathered here today. We can do more together and across sectors than we can accomplish in silos. Again, I wish I could be there to hear the exciting speakers and panel discussions that are in store for you today, as well as hear your ideas and recommendations for innovative solutions. I look forward to reading your summary report to learn more about these and to keeping in touch regarding your future efforts. Thank you for this opportunity and please know that you can count on me to support this mission. Remember that voting makes an impact, so vote on November 8th.